Welcome to another episode of our In Conversation series, where we're joined by some of the inspirational figures discussing their relationship with their own sporting heritage. And today I am so delighted to be joined by Olympic gold and bronze medalist and so many other things and one of our amazing sporting heritage ambassadors. Helen Richardson Wolf. Hello, Helen. Hi, uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. It's so brilliant to be speaking with you. And we're Pleasure. speaking in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic still, and just joins <clears> the <throat> end of an amazing summer of sport, which was much needed. Um, so I wanted to start with asking you, you know, how have the last 18 months been for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, um, it's been, well, different for a lot of reasons. Um, I had, I've got a twenty-month-old um, <laughs> baby daughter, so the, the the last eighteen months has pretty much been <laughs> learning how to parent um, and and kind of enjoying the ride of of motherhood and um, and actually, you know, in in some respects, even though there was some cha very challenging times because of COVID and kind of loss of work and stuff like that. Um, one of the massive benefits that that we had as a family was that we were able to to spend you know those really lovely early moments together as a as a family so that you know ups and downs but that was probably one of the most amazing positives that came out of it um so so yeah lots of different stuff going on as well um you know started working for spurs women as their psychologist and um myself and my wife Kate have written written a book and that's coming out soon um wow. so yeah so much going on um but yeah oh, God, was... so yeah you've had a really um like a, I mean we speak to people and often they've either had a really really hectic busy time or they've really struggled because there's not been enough on because you know if we're used to being busy and then suddenly there's nothing happening it's difficult isn't it but um yeah I mean, Definitely. you had your baby just before lockdown as well, I think, didn't you? Is that, that right? Yeah, it was New Year's oh, yeah. Eve 2019. So, oh, God. We, 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 we got the best of both worlds in a way because we had the kind of first two or three months for family and friends to come and visit and, and stuff like that. So, we didn't miss out on that, which I think would have been very difficult. Um, so, yeah, we, we kind of were lucky in that regard. Oh, what a time, though, to become a new parent. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite yeah there's so many things that you couldn't do but you're right I guess there's you kind of focus in then on what's important and get that time together yeah um, and there's no choice <laughs> yeah no exactly oh. it was nice and we got a, a good routine for her as well which was good oh that's I mean that is brilliant and I guess she's quite um interesting now at this age <laughs> yeah she's she's really starting to kind of you know ha she's a proper little person now she has her own personality and she's starting to make her her feelings very known which is which is okay. great um which we <laughs> you know we love to see um and we're encouraging so it's um yeah it's 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 great to see her grow and develop and yeah it's um it's a lot of fun it's tiring i must say oh, it's tiring yeah. <laughs> but it is, it is mostly a lot of fun so. Oh, good stuff. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, you know, it's been it's been okay. And you mentioned as well about your about your book um, that you've written um, with your wife, a fellow Olympian, Kate. And I just wondered if you could tell me a bit more about it, about what prompted you both to write it and what you hope people will gain from reading it. Yeah, I think, you know, both of us played um, senior international hockey for like nine or 18 years um and in that time we i mean we both saw a lot of change um you know in hockey and in sport and in leadership in psychology and you know in all of those things and we also changed a lot and we learned so much about ourselves as as individuals as people um and we also learned an incredible amount about teams and you know what what it takes to kind of get the best out of of yourself and the people around you essentially you know that's kind of what it comes down to and you know we were part of obviously at the very end we were part of incredibly successful teams but we we had to go through the you know the kind of the bad and the ugly to get to that amazing magic if you like um and just and kind of on reflection we wanted to share some of that and some of the stuff that we'd learned and what is it that helps a, 
a team and the individuals in particular within it thrive and really flourish. Um, so we decided to try and write some of it down <laughs> and it was, you know, it, it was, a, it's a challenging process. I must admit we're, we're very different in how we, um, approached it and, and just in terms of how we kind of get that information from our brains onto a, a piece of paper or, you know, onto our, onto our laptops. And, um, that was, you know, an interesting process, but it, it was, it took us, it took us, uh, you know, a good kind of couple of years, I must say, to, to get it all all down. And um, but yeah, no, we're, we're thrilled to have written, you know, finished writing it and it will be published at the 28th of October. Um, and you can pre-order it now. It's called Winning Together. Um, yeah. And we're very excited about it coming out and and lots of people being able to actually learn about what we went through and, and what we learned. Oh, I mean, it is an amazing achievement, isn't it? To have finished that as well in lockdown and or through the pandemic as well, you know, with a baby. <laughs> it's, you know, know. Yeah, yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it took us a long time, I must say. <laughs> oh, blimey though. But um, I mean, what you talk about in terms of the psychology of sport and what you learn and then to be able to share that. I mean, I guess through the book, that's what you're hoping to be able to do. And I guess you're doing that with your work at Tottenham as well you kind of being able to use that um in so many different ways now yeah no definitely so I'm I have obviously qualified as a, um, a psychologist and that's what I am at Spurs I'm their performance psychologist and yeah a lot of it does kind of come through the experience of experiences I've had um, being topped up with the kind of theoretical mm. stuff that I've learned on my course. Um, and it's great, you know, from a personal level, being kind of back part of a, a sporting team and, you know, getting up in the morning and putting my tracksuit on. And um, that I must, I must admit that's quite a nice feeling um, that I get from it. And then being able to, yeah, share those experiences and and I think that's one of the main things when the players speak to me I'm I, I just empathize with everything that they're saying um and you know being able to um help them in in so many different ways um you know one of the things is trying to develop their culture and create the the, the, the space and the environment that they want to be a part of and and then there's the performance psychology bits that creating that right mindset and helping them get the best out of themselves um, is really, you know, is, is really great. Um, and I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Oh, I mean, that's, it's amazing to hear um, that. Yeah. It's kind of like full circle, isn't it? You've been able to use that and then go and support other people to go through the same process and, and hopefully, you know, in whatever way they want to achieve you know, in, in their own way. Yeah, no, that's the thing because I think, you know, when when I first got into the senior team, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, psychology was was kind of seen as like, who is that? Who's that person? Why, why are they watching us? And what are they thinking? And, you know, it was very much a standoffish kind of um, relationship. And to the point where at the end, it was actually um, the, the psychologist was an integral part of of what and how we did everything um and so to see that journey of, of of you know where psychology has come from and for me personally you, you know how i've kind of developed and, and changed um <clears throat> you know my own perspective of psychology through my own experiences you know i, I struggled with my mental health at, at certain times so that was one of the reasons why i got interested in it but th the main reason was because of the performance element i would look at international teams you know like the Dutch for example and look at them and think why what is it like what have they got why are they winning and we're not because I kind of I'm looking at our team we're, we're I think we're just as good at hockey you know obviously you know te technically tactically we are there or thereabouts physically we absolutely are you know much fitter than or just as fit if not fitter than any other international team so what is it? And so then it, it, it left that 
the, the bit of the mind. Um, and at the elite level of anything, I think probably, but definitely sport, the difference between the 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 top and the then the very very top are those people that are able to um, get the most out of their their minds um, and really and, and what we did actually we really learned how to it kind of comes back to awareness really learn how to notice what is going on in your in your mind and once you start to notice you're able to then do something about it um, I think most of us kind of just go through. <laughs> you yeah. know we don't, yeah. we don't give it much thought do we we're just like oh I, just you know, kind of get on with things I, I it, react yeah. like this and I don't, yeah exactly um but we all we all behave and react in in to certain situations in 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 certain ways and um if we're able to you know control how we react in certain ways and make it a positive reaction um or be proactive actually in probably most of the mm. situations then that that all that all helps so yeah it is fascinating I really do. Yeah, it's something that I'm really um, excited about and um, really fascinated about. Oh, it's brilliant to hear. And and you can see, you know, it's like when you say that about analysing, well, why is it different? And people sometimes forget, you know, their mind's so important. And, you know, if you forget to look at why, you know, what impact and what role that's got, then, yeah, it, it has massive, massive problems. Um, and you spoke there about, you know, how you're seen that difference um throughout your sporting heritage and your sporting career and one of the questions i like to ask people is you know so when we use that term sporting heritage it's quite a big encompassing thing and it um sometimes can be a bit unwieldy and i just wondered what that means to you personally when you think about your own sporting past or the things or the stories that relate to your sporting heritage it is quite a big question <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i think i think the, the thing that springs straight to mind is the fact that we all so that from an individual perspective we all have a story we all have you know the past and somewhere that we've come from and and shaped um who we are today and in a sporting context you know we all have that kind of area where we where we started um so so for me i guess heritage kind of takes me back to where i started playing hockey um and that's that's kind of where it takes me rather than um rather than like actual things um it's more like the the first hockey club that i played at and the 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 memories and the environment and the people um that helped kind of you know start that my journey basically on on you know not knowing where it was gonna <laughs> end up um and i think in in i'm kind of thinking if you speak to most hockey players i think that i mean probably all, all sports people to be honest that's where they would tend to go back to because you know the, the recognition of the the amazing people that give so much time to to, and volunteer in grassroots sport um, and for the, those athletes that are you know kind of do get to the elite level and, and able to compete on the international stage I don't think many if any forget those people and how important they are um, so that's that's where I kind of go back to straight away when I when I talk you know think about my own personal sporting heritage oh yeah that's I mean I We've done a few of these in conversations and um yeah there's lots of that memory of those crucial people who've who've kind of been the difference for so many different um elite athletes um who are often their stories aren't shared often and we don't um always celebrate them but they've been fundamental and it's really good to hear it that you know that's that's what people go back to and it's not always it's not always about the objects it's about the places and it's about the people mm. and yeah i'm fascinated to hear where people have you know where their journey started and what sporting heritage means to them specifically so it's lovely to hear it and your own sporting heritage has been full of so many achievements and successes and you kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier but you've been really honest and open as well about how that's not always been easy 
and how and you've been using that as well to support others and to help others seek help when they need it um it is you know that's really really important yeah and i think you know that obviously the tokyo olympic games the that i think was for some people that was something that stood out actually that i think a lot more athletes are i, I think it's because there's a we i think society is changing a little bit mm. and and sport often reflects society or society reflects sport i don't know you know which way around yeah. it is but often <laughs> one goes before the other and, and they're, they're very they are very reflective and i think athletes are you know beginning to find their voice a little bit more and really stand up for things that are important to them and what they believe in um and as a as a former athlete i really understand how hard it is to to talk about certain things because you are often worried about the implications probably first and foremost on your on yourself and how it will impact your um career and so when you you know you hear Simone Biles for example you know say what she said at the, the Tokyo Games and and put her her own health before winning an Olympic medal um is for me something that is you know very commendable um and it, it's great to see lots of athletes are, are doing that. And and that was the thing for me when, you know, I, I didn't want anyone else to, to feel the way that I had felt at certain times in my career. And so if if me speaking out about it could could help one person, which I know I know loads of people say that, but if it can help one person, then but that is the difference because yeah. you know, and actually when you do when we do start to share this stuff you realize that you aren't alone and and i think that's the great thing that's starting to come out now particularly around mental health is that we we all go through, we all go through it um and th the more we can talk about it the you know the the more that stigma kind of breaks down and we're able to to help and support support each other in in much better ways than potentially we have done in the past Oh, I mean, you know, we, we, our time's nearly up and that's an amazing way to finish talking about, you know, that, you know, if we ignore those things and we don't help each other and we don't say this is how I'm feeling or this is, you know, how you may be able to get more help, then, yeah, it's it's a, a bad way for society to develop, isn't it? And um, it's brilliant to hear you talk about it and reflect on the other athletes who are doing that now and that it's becoming so much more acceptable for people to say that and for no one to think that's an issue but actually to think it's brilliant because like you say if people are seeing people at, at, on the sporting stage saying mm. it then they're thinking it's okay for me to say it and yeah how brilliant is that <laughs> yeah no definitely the more the more we can do that as a as, as a society then it it's it's going to benefit all of us so yeah i hope so and um and the more we can talk about the sporting stories and the sporting past and how people have learned in the way that you have and share that the better for us you know uh, if we can do that and have like you say our own little bit of, of impact in that then brilliant yeah no definitely and i think you know i think a lot of um a lot of the majority of, of the stories that are out there are from ones who who achieved the gold medal or the but there's actually for every athlete that that you know wins that gold medal there's probably hundreds that that have had their hearts broken and and you know they've not kind of reached the the places where they want to reach and their their careers have ended in in um ways that they didn't want it to end and and the more we're able to hear those stories as well actually that the better because it just it it just kind of highlights that it is tough and there's only a, you know a few people that kind of get to that to experience the things that they want to experience um and it, it's important to share the the breadth of of the athletes um out there and, and what what the experiences that we go through oh i think that's so important it's like you were saying earlier as well isn't it it's about the volunteers it's about all those different people that 
come together and and not forgetting that they are just as important you know in that route um yeah brilliant yeah, thank no, you absolutely it's been no, so sure. lovely to talk to you helen um thank you so much um for your time no it's my pleasure um you know sporting heritage is is incredibly important one of the things that i think was so great about our team vision for the rio olympic games um which was be the difference create history inspire the future it, when we had those discussions as a team it was one of the things that was really kind of coming across as a team was that we wanted to acknowledge the past first and foremost you know we wanted to obviously to have longevity as well and go into the future but and be in the present but we wanted to acknowledge the past because actually the role that so many people have already played in getting us here was needs to be acknowledged um and i think the more we can do that the more we can uh, recognize the people that have gone before us it places us in a in a moment in time and i think it helps build a, a better perspective of of actually your contributing to to a timeline of events um and you you know that thing of wanting to leave it in a better place for the next generation um knowing your sporting heritage i think is incredibly powerful and important actually for 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 athletes so the more we can talk about it the more knowledge that we can get out there is, is the better oh music to my ears <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much you're welcome it's a pleasure